Hi, I'm Catherine Diorio, and welcome to Check, Please, the show where regular people from all over Chicago recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week, we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and the other two go check them out and see what they think. This week, bereavement coordinator Matt Holmes says that his pick is to die for because of its delicious food and laid-back atmosphere. But social media specialist Tessa Auza says that fabulous fried chicken places are getting all the buzz in Chicago, and her recommendation is the tops in town. Up first, musician Carol Stevens says that her selection combines a symphony of flavors with first-class service. She says that for a one-of-a-kind experience, follow her to Broadway and stop in at Senza. People are surprised. It's very unassuming. Like just, it's like a storefront. From the outside, we do not look like we're doing 12 courses that are pretty good, you know? We start off with raw, then we go to soup in the beginning, then we might do a couple fish courses, then a braised meat, then a super fatty meat, you know, and then dessert. I kind of focus on fish courses. I, I like eating them, I like cooking them. The most important thing is that people have a good time. Obviously, I want them to say the food's good and that the service was good, but you know, we're not stuffy. Nobody that works in this entire restaurant is a pretentious human being or a stuffy human being, and we don't know any more than you do about anything. And I want, just want to make sure people leave with that impression. We're just trying to have a good time and make people happy, you know? That's, that's it. Carol, you say that Senza hits all the high notes. Tell us why you chose it. The food is prepared in a very classy and beautiful way. It's a piece of art. You look at, there's a flower here, there's a, uh, a little pile of roe over here, and yet, I would say it has a casual feel to it. So what kind of food can you get there? Why don't we talk about the menu? It is a tasting menu. It starts with a muse. I had an oyster that had beautiful little flowers all over it that you could just <laughs> slurp down and it was delicious. Um, and then you'll have a couple of first courses, a, a soup, then you get to entrees and everything. It's small plates um, and go all the way through and you get two desserts. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a good meal. It was an amazing experience, it really. I Usually I walk into a restaurant like that and I get very nervous. It's kind of like pricey and stark. But they, first thing, big smile, how are you, welcome you in. The service was what made it for me. I mean, I loved, you're right, the presentation was amazing. I think you'd appreciate this. It, it was musical and that was like different changes and different colors and like textures and it was, each one was just a little different, but somehow connected to the next. Like, for instance, the, that one, I think it was the soup then, that I wanted to do, like just lick the entire bowl, and then the bread service came out, and then something else that you had to use that bread with. So each one just kind of folded into the next thing. Me and my friend had to take pictures of everything. <laughs> everything. Well, Matt, what'd you think? Oh, I thought it was... Uh, taking pictures of everything? It didn't take any pictures. <laughs> Probably the only person there who wasn't taking pictures, though. Um, I appreciated that they took the choice away from me on this menu. I think the chef was doing something, and something creative, something thoughtful, running through a menu, um, and I don't think I would have gotten that experience if they hadn't taken the guesswork out. You know, I, I got to admit, it, it was great, it was wonderful. Um, at the end of the meal, when, uh, when it was time to pay up, I wasn't check please, I was more like check no thank you. <laughs> but, uh, that being said, it's got to be one of the top five meals I think I've ever had in my life. So um, you got bang for your buck. Well, I think um, you kind of fell into the meal and the experience. They do an incredible job of making you uh, just feel so special during the whole thing with that extra service, which uh, they brought over a couple uh, shots of tequila at the end for me. And I don't know if I look like the kind of guy who likes tequila, <laughs> but I, I do, and I appreciate it. Um, and I gotta tell you, the, the menu, it seems almost unapproachable when you're looking at it online. And then when you get there, they were so kind and so helpful. Oh, agreed. I mean, I, th I think what I loved about it was anytime I felt nervous or not knowing, there was an explanation that came along mm -hmm. with it. Because I'm always worried about which spoon, what fork. Right. But they present everything and take mm -hmm. away things so yeah. you don't, there's no question mm -hmm. as to what you're supposed to do. So um, the chef, Noah's Animal, 
He came from Schwa, which was a Michelin starred restaurant, as Senza is, and trained under Sean McLean at Spring. And the cool thing is, they are the first restaurant that is 100% gluten free to get a Michelin star. So you can't go wrong if you're gluten free. And I'm about 85% gluten free. I. I'm curious, like, did you know this was gluten-free? Could you tell when I you went to the restaurant? I was doing my research online. I had no clue that it was gluten-free, and it well, never crossed my mind to but even consider it. In, when they first opened, it was on the menu. It said that it was a gluten-free restaurant. It no longer says that. And what that says to me is that they no longer feel that they need to make an excuse mm -hmm. or notify. They're willing to compete with anybody because they know the quality of the food is that. Good. Like even that bread, I would not have thought twice about it. In fact, so what they do, I guess, is they char it a little bit. Yeah. I have never eaten a burnt piece of toast before, <laughs> but this was totally on the and gluten free. Come to our house, my husband will cook today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, right. It's not hurting for the lack of gluten whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it's weird when I got done and I had eaten there and I was talking to people I knew and I said where I went, they go, oh, that gluten free restaurant. Really, that really did not uh, affect my experience, but it's nice too. It's in Lakeview, which is a very young, transitional area. A lot of times you'd expect to see a lot of college-age students or younger students. What was it like inside? Who was there and what did it feel like? Pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. And then the energy as the, the room filled up was really nice. It wasn't too loud. The conversations and stuff seemed good and the energy was really nice. So, you know, Matt, you went with your wife. Mm -hmm. You know, would you say it's um, a place for a date night or do you think it's a place a group of friends can go? Well. With my knucklehead friends, they don't belong there. My <laughs> wife, we had a great time there. Okay. Um, even if there's a lull in the kind, you know, we've got a little kid that's all we talk about, but the food gave us something else to kind of jump into other topics and act like adults and enjoy <laughs> ourselves. We got a, a bottle of wine. Um, they ordered, uh, they basically said, what's the cheapest wine you got on the menu? <laughs> but they made me feel really good about giving me the cheapest bottle of wine. You know, they said, oh no, but this is real flirty and fun, or, you know, yeah, something. Right. And it was, I guess this wine can be flirty and fun. It was. Um, but it, it uh, yeah, it, it was very comfortable in that way, and they were very helpful. Well, Carol, you chose Senza. Sum it up for us. Beautiful food, artfully prepared, perfectly presented. Great. And Tessa? Really artistic experience, really overall something to share with friends and family. Great. And Matt? A great meal. They don't give it away, but with food that good and service that good, they don't have to. You can try the tasting menu for yourself at Senza, 2873 North Broadway, 773-770-3527. Open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday, reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is $115. Restaurant trends come and go, but Tessa Auza says that she hopes that her hot spot stays around for a long time. She says for an update on a classic cuisine, follow her to Elston Avenue and stop in at Honey Butter Fried Chicken. Quality is absolutely essential. Really pride ourselves on our quality of food, our quality of service, making sure that we give our customers that good experience. And they love being here, we love being here. I always say this is my favorite place to be. Um, and we just, you know, it's true. Um, our fried chicken sort of has this wonderful smoked paprika sprinkled on it right when it comes out of the fryer. Um, we uh, slather some honey butter on that fried chicken like you're buttering toast. It's a pretty wonderful uh, way to spend a Friday or Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday. Pretty or much every day that we're open. Um, our side dishes are um, very seasonal, very uh, farmer's market friendly. You know, food that you want to eat, but that you can feel pretty good about eating. A really good time. 
<laughs> a really good experience. And we have a lot of repeat customers here. And I think we strive to sort of recreate that first experience every time somebody comes here. Um, we're really sort of devoted and committed to making sure that everybody comes here and leaves better than they were in some capacity, whether they're like super full or they had a great customer service experience or just had a really good time. Like we're pretty committed to making that happen. So Tessa, you say if the name won't get you, then the food definitely will at Honey Butter Fried Chicken. Why'd you choose it? Um, well, I've been a big fan of um, the chefs, Christine and Josh. I've uh, gone to their um, Sunday dinner club. Mm -hmm. And so I've been introduced to their food from that. But then to hear that they've got a particular kind of fried chicken that involves slathering honey butter on it, <laughs> then I was sold immediately. I gotta have it. So what else is the sides, fresh, um, change with the season, change with the whim. They get inspired by so many different things. They'll say that they, you know, visited um, another, another, yet another local farm that they work with that has mm -hmm. another great um, vegetable that they want to use and they create something. And then they share it on Instagram, and then I have to be there. <laughs> so that's what that's usually. I how love your social media <laughs> expert. Yeah. You're like, of course, you're following yeah. Instagram. So, you're, so the social media is working for them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I thought it was fabulous, and I, I've got to preface this with saying I tried to go there twice before, and I was just not willing to stand in line for an hour, and so yeah, okay. I've I've turned away from it. So this gave me the opportunity to go back. The chicken was delicious. I had a uh, quarter dark and it was delicious. But I gotta tell you the sides, they were spectacular. The, the collard greens, which is I guess always on the menu, yum yum. And, uh, and then we had pickled peaches, mm -hmm. delish, but the best, the, the garlic grits, I yeah. want the vat that they need <laughs> in there. I just, I could have eaten. They were light and fluffy mm -hmm. and just kind of slid off the spoon and it was to die for it. So Matt, what did you think? Loved it. Um, I love fried chicken. I really love fried chicken. I, I eat vegan during the week. Really? But uh, when my wife goes out of town or the weekend <laughs> comes, I've got a box of fried chicken and I love it from everywhere. You know, I like Harold's to KFC, but uh -huh. they have a lot of pitfalls that this place really really avoided um the uh the, the chicken skin actually served as a great crust um it didn't you know you often get where you bite in and the skin comes off and you're left with a yes. huge piece of meat and a piece of skin <laughs> and they're both delicious and yet they're both too greasy and they don't work. this place it it's stuck together, together. Yes. Um, and i think it, and so often you get uh chicken i don't know fried chickens are uh it, they're it's like ostrich meat you know it's a it's a jumbo right. lake these were actually yeah, you could they're tell they chickens. knew. Yes, yes. 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 They're happy chickens. Um, yeah. That's and what my sister well told them. She, yeah. she can tell that they're happy chickens. And that's what they're proud of. They work with like really great farms yes. and, yeah. and they make sure that they've got really quality stuff. Luckily, we heard another table being instructed on how to eat the chicken. You take the honey butter and you <laughs> spread it on the chicken and it changes the taste of the chicken. And it sure does. <laughs> I wanted another little piece, another little vat of honey butter. Right. Because you want that on the cornbread too, which yeah. was very good cornbread. Oh, it was really good cornbread. Well, the thing that's funny about the honey butter on the chicken is it actually was a mistake. Mm. So when it was the fried chicken was being plated for one of their Sunday dinner menus, they um, the cook they say they don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. put all the honey butter all over everything, the greens, the chicken, everything, and it melted. And they said, oh gosh, and they said, you know what, we're just gonna eat it. And then they took the bite and they said, oh right. my gosh, <laughs> and there you go. Matt, so Av it's, this is in Avondale, and that area is really, again, coming up, a lot of young families are moving into the area, it's really changing a lot. Um, you went for lunch, what was the crowd like? Um, it, it was, uh, yeah, like you said, a lot of young families. There were older folks, or not older folks, professional <laughs> folks leaving, <laughs> leaving work. And you went with, with your child, right? Yeah, I went yeah. with my boy. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't eat any of his chicken because I ate it all. <laughs> and he didn't eat any of his pimento mac and cheese. I ate all not, that too. When he's Did 21, we're going to tell him. The boy? <laughs> he had some of my greens. Okay. He, he was okay. It's better for him. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, we got there early enough where it wasn't super crowded yet. Okay. It was by the time we left. Um, but it, it was you know, hipster crowd, and who knew hipsters could make fried chicken so good? But they tend to be good at stuff, and they did a really good job at that. <laughs> and I ordered a cocktail when I got in from the guy behind the register. Mm -hmm. um, you know, normally awesome. a drink for me is cup plus liquor, mm -hmm. um, so I don't normally get cocktails, uh, mm -hmm. you know, especially specialty ones. 
This was really good. This was like a great cup of tea I, with a pretty nice I, shot I, of whiskey I in it. I love their craft cocktails. I have the Aven I had the Avondale Ginger Mule. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was so yummy and refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Tessa, you chose honey butter fried mm -hmm. chicken. Sum it up for us. So comfort food, but really entertaining and friendly, and uh, definitely for friends and family. Great. Carol? Delicious. Make sure you try a bunch of sides with your chicken and uh, get your fingers in there. <laughs> and Matt? Um, chicken that's done well, that's ethical, and that avoids the pitfalls you normally get with fried chicken. Great. You can try the honey butter fried chicken for yourself at Honey Butter Fried Chicken, <laughs> 3361 North Elston, 773-478-4000. Open for lunch and dinner, Wednesday through Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is $15. Matt Holmes is a bereavement coordinator. He does not go for those underground types of dining experiences. He <laughs> says for the best of the Midwest and much more, follow him to LaGrange Road and join him at Nixon's. We always felt like LaGrange needed a great American restaurant that really embraced fresh, big, bold flavors. And we filled that gap. Basically our food uh, matches that ambiance here, which is very rustic, laid back, your all Americana feel. Um, there's something for everybody on the menu, uh, whether you want something a little bit different with that elk burger, with the duck fat fried egg for that richness, uh, or whether you're looking for something lighter with the flatbreads or salads. We're, we're brothers. <laughs> um, you know, we, it's, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rather have it any other way. You know, we grew up working in the restaurant business. This is second nature to us. It's our passion and it's a fantastic opportunity to share with everyone that comes in here. We love what we do and, you know, to have people on that same excitement level uh, and, and want to come back and be excited about it all over again is uh, it's what it's all about. Matt. You say Nixon's has all the fixings, so why'd you choose it? Um, well, when I first moved out of, the, uh, out of the city and into the suburbs, I was really concerned about getting the kind of food that I really like, which yeah. is you know, quality, well-made, simple food, um, a place that's seasonal, that knows its, uh, it, its farms, that has a thoughtful business model about you know, how it produces, how it makes its food, um, but also a kind of place I could bring people, because people come out to visit, you want to have a place that's a good representation of your neighborhood, of, of what you like and what you like about where you live. Um, and I think Nixon's does all of that on top of having really good beer um, that switches and uh, a great, great menu. There's, uh, there's fried green tomato sandwiches, southern style food, brisket, uh, pork meats that are slow cooked that are really, really good. Um, creative. They more usual. They have like an elk burger. They do right? have an elk burger, so, yeah. Brisket um, grilled cheese. Brisket yes. grilled cheese, <laughs> brisket tacos. Um, so they, they do, I like their brisket. I think they do a great job with that. For the most part, whatever it is, it's simple and it's thought out and uh, usually pretty creative. So Tessa, what would you think? Um, it was an interesting trip out there. So I grew up in the suburbs, so I'm familiar with, with mm -hmm. it. LaGrange just was really hopping that night. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So it was a little unexpected. Um, but then to go into um, Nixon's, it was really nice and bright and I liked the energy and everything. But uh, they sat us in the back area. 
And so that was a little disappointing, unfortunately. It was, it was a little darker. We were sitting at a high boy, and the table was small, like a bar. Mm -hmm. And so it was a little disappointing with so that. So they sat you in the bar, because the front has obviously the big mm -hmm. restaurant area, and then you were by with the TV in the bar. I'm someone who, if I'm getting a seat in a seat, I don't like, I'll usually just say, can you move me? Yeah. Are you the type of person that would do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess are any of you, that, you know? You know, I wish I did. I really, 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 I think it really depends on the did. restaurant. Yeah. I, I, in a place like that where it's so casual and everything, yes. I, I think you probably wouldn't have had a problem. So we had the opposite. Good. We were seated in the front room and we had a party of six. Mm -hmm. So we were big and we were kind of rambunctious and noisy. Mm -hmm. And so they put us at a round, like in an alcove, but in the main room. Mm -hmm. So it was like having our own little space, but we were still part of the, the atmosphere, which was, Families with itty bitty babies, you know, one dad was in charge of walking the baby around the room. And it and could have been me. Could have been you. <laughs> Good chance. Could have been, no, you didn't know beard. <laughs> um, but, but Matt, it, it, the thing about the restaurant was that they had such a variety on the menu. We had an 11 year old all the way up through 65 year old. Mm -hmm. And everybody found something on the menu that they liked. Mm -hmm. The 11 year old got her little flatbread and was like, yes pizza, you know. And, and that's one of the things I love about the place is you can really bring anybody you want there almost for any kind of meal. But everything is like 11 and $12. The yeah. most expensive thing on the menu was $22 and, and that was the only thing that was that Pork much. Pork and beans. Yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> you know. but it was really, really, really neat. And, and did you guys have the shrimp appetizer? I, I don't think I've ever had Oh, that. grilled shrimp. They were delicious. He had the, uh, Crab cakes, they were mm -hmm. good. Frisket <laughs> taco was amazing. I loved that too. Mm -hmm. I really liked that um, they'd listened down like their different uh, farms and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had a beautiful golden beet uh, plate. Uh, that was my favorite, actually. I have friends and family in the suburbs, mm -hmm. and if I want to take them somewhere, and I would make sure that it would be a big group and that it was in the front, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I know that we'd have a lot of fun. Kel, you said that your so, group yeah. had tried a bunch of cocktails and some wine. Several of our group had several mm -hmm. cocktails. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, they enjoyed the cocktails. I had a cider, which they do seasonal ciders, mm -hmm. and I'll admit, it wasn't my favorite. Um, on the other hand, the ginger beer that my husband had oh. just suddenly disappeared from the <laughs> and It was delicious, and it was, I think it was local, you know, brewed mm -hmm. uh, ginger beer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Good. So, I have a question. Matt, you grew up in that area, then moved mm -hmm. downtown, and now have since moved back, you know, with, with your family, with your, with your wife and your son. So, why don't we talk, tell me a little bit about how that area has developed. I just feel like it's changed a lot in downtown LaGrange. Sure. Um, yeah, LaGrange Road, like you said, it's there's all these cafes, um, especially in the summertime, it's great. There's so much seating on the street. Um, it's busy, it's bustling. There's new places going in all the time. Um, th that was our a big concern was, would there be enough restaurants? And But they change and there's new stuff and it, it's, um, it's, it's really got a lot of interesting thing. Um, there's world cuisine out there. You can get Thai food or Indian. Um, and we've really got to pack it all together. You know, we got one downtown. You can't go three blocks north right. and have another strip of restaurant. So it's all got to be there, and it really is. Matt, you chose Nixon's. Sum it up for us. I think Nixon's is a place that's available to everybody, where everybody can find something they love and have a great time, um, and a good time to hang out with friends and family. Great. And Carol? Good food, great energy, and very nice area to visit. Great. And Tessa? Yeah, LaGrange is something to explore, I think, mm -hmm. and I think this is a great place to check out some good food in the local area. Yeah, cool. You can judge for yourself at Nixon's, 30 South LaGrange Road in LaGrange, 708-354-4995. Open for lunch and dinner, Monday through Saturday, reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is $30. So on this week's show, we featured Senza in Lakeview, Honey Butter Fried Chicken in Avondale, and Nixon's in LaGrange. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we brought you to Broadway and stopped in at Senza. Carol recommends it for amazing gluten-free cuisine done beautifully. Matt enjoyed everything he had, even though it was a little pricey. Tessa loved the whole experience and had fantastic service. Next, we ended up on Elston and tried out Honey Butter Fried Chicken. Tessa recommends it for amazing fried chicken with a cool and friendly vibe. Carol said the chicken was delicious, but really loved all the sides. 
Matt was impressed with everything from the chicken to the cocktails. Lastly, we went to the western suburbs and checked out Nixon's. Matt recommends it and says it has something for everyone. Tessa liked the food, but didn't enjoy where she sat in the restaurant. Carol had a great time and loved the diverse menu. We had a great time this week. I want to thank my guests, Carol Stevens, Matt Holmes, and Tessa Auza. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Catherine DiOrio, and I'll see you then. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Please, go to wttw.com slash checkplease.